It's just after a quarter to eight here on BBC Essex. Well, a satirical song about South End has gone viral on the internet. It's called Sometimes Our Peers on Fire, and its lyrics are to the tune of Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire. Among other things, the words mock what it calls the ongoing saga of whether South End United will move to a new ground. They claim there's nothing to do in Chalkwell and tell how a public toilet in South End Seafront's been turned into a restaurant. The chorus refers to the four fires on the here over the years. Here's a snatch of it. Sometimes a bee's on fire And my aquatus Rendered by water Sometimes a bee's on fire It is all it up But still will smash it up Fish and chips, crazy hair Bigger, bigger, painter, pants If our crosses all get gold Look, we have an airport Where our geezers with no toes Meet in a phone case Shows, touch it, touch it, stuff it All the restaurant, public bug It's lost in the arcade, there's no issue, I'm afraid Cleanse or balance for a play, everyone lives in Torbay Local press lets itself down, it can spend its only town Rock and donuts can grow, make you at the old town Sometimes a bee's on fire, a mighty quad is running by water well, that's Sometimes Our Peers on Fire, which, as you can hear, isn't sung by a man with a South End or Essex accent. Well, let's meet the man behind it. He describes himself as the chief reporter for a group called the South End News Network. Good morning, chief reporter. Hi, how's it going? Very good, thank you, thank you. Um, so where's the singer from? It's a long story, actually. Well, actually, it's not. It's a very short and boring one, but um, a lot of people thought it was me. I was going to say, it, it, wasn't, it, yeah. so it wasn't you just putting yeah, on a, a crazy voice. Thing. I do have a habit of doing crazy off-the-cuff things and then making out that they're actually quite well thought for and planned, but I'm actually a French teacher by trade, so I do know a lot of French-speaking people, and the guy's actually a good friend of mine. He's um, Algerian, actually, and for one reason or another, he doesn't want any further involvement in the process. Prob- you know, that might be just uh, his decision, but... Yeah, that's him, basically. So it was just because he's a mate, it's not because he's Algerian or Pretty any connection much, with that? Pretty much, it turns out, if I would have sung it, there's no way it would have had nearly 250,000 views on Facebook. I think if I'd have sung it, I'd have been lucky to get 25, to be fair, so... It's, it, it's, it's, just, it's just another little thing that adds to the intrigue. Is he from Southend? Is that a Southend accent? All right, mate, no, it ain't really, but, you know, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm from Southend, but I don't have mm. an accent like that. No, I'm kind of a Rochford baby, yeah. Southend, London whatever you know yeah it's <laughs> is it unfortunate that the title of the song sometimes appears on fire has come at a time when the i know south end is reopening today mm. but it, it was closed wasn't it because of structural problems well yeah i mean it's opening today as far as i know for people to walk along it just not get yes. the train so yep. bit of unfortunate timing really but again you know there are people in south end who would look to blame me for every tiny little thing that ever goes wrong so i think this is one thing i can hold my hands up and say no definitely wasn't us it's not on fire it's just wobbling a little bit. <laughs> so you wrote the song, didn't mm. you? And you based it on your own observations around South End. How long have you lived here? You are um, a Rochford boy. Um, born in Rochford, actually. Well, born in Rochford. Lived in Westcliff, then Lee. Went out to France for a year, which is why I sort of um, perfected le français avec an accent londonais. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, came what back over here. What did the French think of your accent? Um, uh, you speak like the Prince William. Uh, <laughs> the the uh, Harry Potter. So, yeah, not quite, but you think that if you want, you know, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> do you try and speak French in a French accent, or do you just use your um, own? I do, it's just hello, hello. I mean, some of the kids I work with, you know, they sort of go, oh, your French accent's hilarious. So, and I meet French people, and they just say, oh, don't bother, just put on an English accent, it's funnier that way. So Now, a quarter of a million people mm. have watched this video so far, yeah. and, um, y- y- you know, we've listed some of the things in the town you've mm. mocked, but there are good things about South End, you flag up in the song It is, I mean, well. I'm just going to come clean about this now. A lot of people think I'm some kind of South End hating, you know, lunatic, for want of a better word, but no, I absolutely love South End. I've been here my whole life, and I just, I just have a real issue sometimes with maybe the way the place is run, uh, the powers that be are trying to possibly destroy the kiss me quick hat side of it that I think South End is absolutely fantastic for, you know, and the fact that South End Council have actually reached out to me now and said, look, they've created a hashtag truth behind the spoof to try and interact with their own, you know, audience on Facebook and their Facebook followings doubled since they started talking to me as well, which is obviously shows that there is some kind of weird and twisted market for them to speak to people who spout absolute garbage, basically, you know. <laughs> are you amazed myself, that this but... song has gone viral? Um, I'm a little bit surprised. What happened was I didn't finish sorting out the lyrics and stuff like that and making the video and the photos. That was a monumental task. I didn't finish sorting it out until 1am 
uh, last Friday night, Saturday morning, and there I am on Facebook trying to schedule it. I think, do you know what? 5 p.m. Saturday night, perfect time to actually send it out. I'm sorting it out, and I accidentally put 5 a.m., not 5 p.m., went to bed all bleary-eyed, woke up the following morning, and it's already getting thousands of views. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, I didn't want to release it yet. And all the a couple of people that I've actually spoken to who I was trying to sort out promoting it for have said, it's already online, what are you doing? And I said, oh, do you know what I've done? I've done it 12 hours the wrong way. But it turns out that was actually a really good thing because loads of people woke up to it on Saturday morning and the whole thing just exploded from there. So I suppose everything happens for that kind of reason, so I was quite pleased. Well, my wife, she spotted it, mm. and uh, she said, you've got to listen to this. Mm. And it was at the same time as Tim contacted me and said that he, was getting, yeah. he was getting you in. Mm. And she said she finds it hilarious, but there must mm. be people who didn't. Possibly. I'm guessing the entire population of Leon C and everyone on Canvey who got really upset that I never actually mentioned them. Because I tried to keep it in the borough of South End, you know. But, um, but, you know, if there ever is a second song, I can mention Canvey Island, Roller City. For some reason, they kept asking me, you've not mentioned Roller City. So I, I can't skate, I've not been there, you know. <laughs> but, um, no, I'd probably suggest Leon C are probably... Half of the people in Leon C wouldn't like it, but then I do do a lot of stories about Leon C because, again, there's always an ongoing joke about the gentrification of Lee Broadway and, you know, lovey darling kind of attitude, what what, you know. But um, <laughs> again, it's all in good humour, and I don't mean anybody any ill harm, contrary to what people think. So. Now, you're the chief reporter for the South End yes. News Network, which publishes on the internet spoof stories mm. with photos. Yes. Here's a few of them. Parents' anger after primary school bans England flags over complaint fears. Parents with children at Osborne Road Primary School in Westcliff have been describing their anger to South End News Network after the head teacher sent an email saying that children have been banned from bringing England flags into school during the Euro 2016 tournament. The ban's also been extended to England shirts. South End Council launches six week NVQ course for residents confused by new recycling arrangements. A spokesperson for South End Council has confirmed that a six-week evening course will begin in early July for residents who are confused by the new recycling arrangements. According to the recently formed South End Borough Domestic Waste Enlightenment Foundation, the intense and hard-going study programme will allow local residents to handle their pink sacks, blue boxes, food caddies, green wheelie bins and black bags with absolute ease. Oh dear, now so it's oh, gone. I know. <laughs> I've just got to say now, actually, I mean, the, you've picked a really good story there, the one about the recycling and bin arrangements, because I get, so, I mean, I get loads of messages, the occasional death threat, you know, that kind of thing, but um, no, I get loads of messages right now saying, um, what's going on with our bins? Because as far as I know, without obviously wanting to get sued or thrown off the end of the pier that I'm so fond of, um, South End, as far as I know, they've kind of changed provider recently from one to another and everybody's moaning about bins being left out and the foxes seeming to think that the waste paper boxes have got some kind of magic fox formula inside that they all want to get at and they people keep getting in touch with me our bins aren't being collected we don't know what to do me personally i nearly actually chopped the end of my finger off in one of those new blue boxes where you put the paper and i'm thinking a small child could actually get seriously hurt by one of these and people are actually getting in touch with me now saying please do a story about the rubbish please do a story about the rubbish and i've done one i'm thinking of doing Another one soon, obviously, if they want to keep them, keep them pilled for that. But, yeah, that's a very topical thing at the moment, the rubbish. Because the thing is, you know, the instant reaction to mm. the stories from the headlines which appears online, mm. on Twitter or on your website, is they could be believable, but then you read on and each one is like an April Fool. Are, are mm. all the stories you've written and, right. and reported, every are they sing- all spoofs? Um, every single story. I mean, okay, I mean, there was one a couple of weeks ago where a cat... And again, I should have really checked my sources, obviously, being the responsible journalist that I am. Ha ha. Um, there was a cat who managed to travel all the way from South End in a van's engine compartment right over to Staffordshire. So I actually put a thing at the top saying, this is not a spoof. But everybody comes on there saying, of course it's a spoof. It's from, it's from, it's from, South, it's from South End News Network. So the couple of times I've tried to stray into real news, it's all blown up in my face hilariously. So I tend to steer clear of that now. You do? I leave that. I, just, um, I, tend, I tend to leave that to the echo. They're the people who tend to deal with stuff that's actual news. And I tend to be the anti-echo, which people know we are a bit of a... We don't like the echo kind of organisation, really. But, Speaking yeah. about this, I mean, have other news... Have any of your news stories been actually taken up by media? They have. Very nearly. My biggest regret, and if the guy who fell for this wants to um, take issue with it, I've got the emails to prove it. But, um, no, 
I did a story quite a while ago about a girl from South End who wanted to name her baby Hermione, a big fan of the Harry Potter films. And there was an administrative error at the council and the baby ended up being called heroin. <laughs> as in the narcotic, you know, whatever. Simple and s- spelling mistake. Simple spelling mistake, pronunciation error, whatever. But I actually got an email from the acting bureau chief of the Associated Press in London. I'm not going to name him, you know, whatever. I'm sure he'll get in touch with me if he's got a problem with this. And he says, hi, I'd actually like to find out more and possibly run this story. And my biggest regret is not just going along with it to see what happens. I'm thinking, you know, if this actually got out, this would be absolutely fantastic. But at the time I said, you do know we're a spoof news website, don't you? And he goes, I do now. I'm thinking, oh, do you know what, my biggest regret, why didn't I just run with it and see where it finished up? Because, I mean, again, there was a, there's a very, very, very good um, similar website called the uh, Suffolk Gazette. They do the same kind of thing up in Suffolk, obviously. And they had a story about an old lady who got stuck in toilets um, eating some knitting just to survive, and that got picked up. And I'm thinking, I'd love the same thing to happen to me. But again, people do believe the start of a story, and they share it, and they don't read the comments, or they don't read the rest of it at all. They just don't bother checking and saying, hang on a minute, they see some of the names of the people that I come up with, and they think, do you know what, actually, this might not be real, but people share it, and then people share it again without reading the comments. And I did a story that got quite a lot of flack in the end, saying... um, South End beaches are going to ban bikinis this summer. They're going to have free modesty beaches to appeal to people of all cultural backgrounds. <laughs> and people were sharing it. And it got picked up and shared by some, I'm going to be honest, pretty nasty people online who have not just members... They're so far to the right, you know, they're so far extreme, right, they've almost come back around to the left again. And these people are sharing it. And people are leaving horrible, nasty, racist comments on it. And I think, I'm responsible for this. And I'm thinking... Yeah, I'm responsible for this, you know. This is <laughs> actually really, quite funny. You but, just want yeah. people to have fun, don't you? I mean, is, is it I like just, taking yeah. the mickey out of news? It is. It's taking the mickey out of news, and one particular news outlet in Essex in particular who, you know, again, I don't blame them for printing the stuff that they do because they have to fill up a newspaper five days a week with, you know, photos of people looking longingly into the camera going, you know, woe is me, taking it from a nice high angle so that people feel sorry for them, you know, that kind of thing. But again, you know, it's kind of... Um, I. I don't mind if people want to throw any abuse at me either because it's just what I do and I'd be an absolute fool if I just uh, got the hump about it and started crying. So, Well, yeah. I, th- I think if you start reading those mm. stories, you get hooked in and uh, yeah. you, you then can't leave them alone because you yeah. then think, so where's, so where's this going? And then you see it and you can't mm. help but laugh about them. But uh, it's lovely having you in. Chief Thank reporter. You. Chief for, reporter. <laughs> for now, until somebody blows it, I'm sure it will happen. But and I noticed you you're wearing a T-shirt which has got SNN on it. Correct, yes. One so of my... Think- um, one of my... Uh, Regular fans decided it'd be a great idea to get this uh, sorted out. So we are going to print some T-shirts and sell them because obviously I'm not looking to make any money out of this. Obviously, but you know, if people want to wear the T-shirts, then I couldn't stop them, could I? So thank you, Chief Reporter from the South End News Network, BBC Essex, coming up towards a minute to eight.